The Bush administration spent several years and tens of millions of dollars, the estimates are between 40 and $70 million, trying to track down voter fraud in the United States. Uh, seven attorneys general, or excuse me, several federal pro- seven federal prosecutors uh, chose not to go along with that, that and ended up getting fired. There's a whole that's a whole scandal around that. But what they discovered, they actually nailed about 30 people after over a three year period. And what they discovered is that you're more likely to be struck by lightning than to live in a state in which genuine voter fraud happens, and that virtually that virtually all of the voter fraud they f- they found fell into one of two categories: either it was people who were felons who lived in states where felons can't vote after they get out of prison and didn't realize it, or they were people like Mitt Romney, who claims that his legal residence is the basement of his son's house in Massachusetts, even though he lives in a multi-million dollar mansion in California, and or Ann Coulter, who re- registered to vote at the address of her agent because your registered address becomes public and she didn't want that public. So when she voted, that was voter fraud, and she could have gone to jail for that in Florida. And the same thing with Mitt Romney. Horace Cooper is on the line with us. He is a legal commentator and senior fellow with the Heartland Institute. Heartland.org is the website. And Horace, I don't understand why you guys are so hysterical about voter fraud, particularly after the millions that the Bush administration did, uh, looking for it and not finding any. Well, the real issue here is whether or not ghost voters and whether or not fraudulent voters ought to be uh, given precedence over actual voters. And there are many legislatures across the country that say, if you're an actual voter, we want to count you. If you're not, we don't. That's not the real issue. You know, you and I both know that the real issue is if you are black, if you are poor, if you don't, if you don't own a car, if you live in a city and you don't have a driver's license, if you are elderly... The Republican Party doesn't want you voting. And all of the okay. states that let, you just let, described that have passed those of kinds of laws, all of the let's states that you just described that have passed those kind of laws are controlled by let's, Republican let's, legislatures. Uh, actually, that's not true. It's not tr- uh, true in the case of Connecticut. Uh, it's not uh, true uh, in the cases of uh, places like Texas, where the voter ID law went into effect before uh, there was a Republican legislature in place, although they did have a Republican governor. Uh, it is simply not the case that the targeted groups are people who are not sympathetic to quote the GOP. Let uh, me let me the if I may. overwhelmingly support uh, Republicans uh, uh, nationally. So uh, the whole idea it doesn't actually fit. That the whole idea is let's just target people who are opposed to the GOP. Okay, Horace, the, here this is you know who Paul Weyrich is, don't you? Yes, I did. I yeah. knew who he was. You knew he was. Yeah, he died last year. Paul Weyrich was the one of the lead consultants to the Reagan campaign. Uh, the man who was in charge of the of direct mail for Reagan. Some say he made Reagan's campaign. He worked on the George Herbert Walker Bush campaign. He worked on the George W. Bush campaign. Major Republican strategist, political strategist. Here is Paul Weyrich in 1980 as they're kicking off the Ronald Reagan campaign, speaking to a group of Christian activists, Jerry Falwell and his bunch, in their church. Paul Weyrich. Now many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. So, you're going to tell me this is not a Republican strategy? Paul Weirich says that he is not interested in having every single person show up to vote uh, and vote. Um, that has very little bearing on this fact. The Supreme Court has consistently held, upheld over 75 years that there can be a minimum residency requirement. Legislature in all 50 states, uh, even now including Wisconsin, agree. You can't uh, wake up on election day and decide uh, you're ready to participate in the voter process. Why not? It can't actually be true. Shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be all right? State that 49 states understood this principle, and then when Wisconsin did it, it was only a GOP scam or scandal, and not just a recognition. That well, you know, in North Dakota, you don't even need to register to vote. You could just show up the day of the election. And frankly, shouldn't it, shouldn't it be that way in every other state in the Union? Uh I think it's up for each legislature to be able to decide that, and I don't think it's part of a conspiracy when legislatures say that they would like to have some kind of residential insurance uh, that the committed 
voter actually understands the community that they live in, is committed to the interests of that particular community, well, it's cer- it's and certainly, has made a, an informed decision. It's certainly a bit, very reasonable position. It, it certainly bit uh, uh, Gingrich, New Gingrich here in the butt a couple of days ago. Um, in Virginia, they've got one of these laws, and the law says that when you vote, the address at which you're registered has to be identical to the address on your ID. And so if you live in Virginia and you move to, say, you go to college, for example, you know, nine months out of the year, even in the state, uh, or if you have moved in the last year and you have not changed your address with the state, and 9%, 7% of Americans move every year, that's probably down a little bit right now because of the recession, but that's the average 7%. Um, and so Newt turned in 11,500 signatures. And in the past, the Republican Party's rule had always been, if you can, you know, if this is a genuine registered Republican voter, that's fine. But this year they decided to go with the standards that the state applies, is going to apply to everybody when they show up at the polls, which meant that your ID has to match your address. And Newt didn't have 10,000 of those because, uh, you know, a small percentage of people had moved. And Newt found himself on the outside looking in. Don't you think that we should have everybody participating? I say good cheer to the state of Virginia. They're demonstrating that the rule is not uh, designed to prefer Republicans over Democrats and that uh, they're applying this standard to everyone. And if you wish to participate in the Virginia process, you're going to have to keep up with the rules. Um, your example is an, exa- an exceptionally good example of demonstrating that this is not about some partisan bias. No, it's about making uh, it harder to vote. In 2008, uh, Virginia, North Carolina, uh, Florida, a number of places uh, voted um, heavily for Barack Obama and did so while those jurisdictions had these rules in place. Uh, if you have a campaign and a candidacy that is appealing, you will get support among those who are duly eligible to participate. What is not acceptable is to allow ghost voters to come in and that those people get to decide who are elected representatives. Horace, how many, how many people in the last decade have been convicted of voter fraud? How many ghost voters? How many people who intentionally went to the polls with the, with the plan of really the, screwing the, uh, up the election? In the state of Colorado, in the state of Colorado, they had a uh, campaign where they arrested nearly nine people, uh, people who were paid to round up people to register to vote um, uh, unlawfully and uh, it was uh, um, mail-in ballots. Uh, they uh, uh, were uh, uh, rounding up people for travel, covering their expenses so they could register. Right. They, in multiple these, these, these were examples of people violating the registration laws, and but not of people actually voting. How many for people purpose, in the last 10 years... For the purpose can, of allowing Horace, to be cast... I'll bet you Mitt Romney's 10000 bucks that, you'll never, that you can't identify <laughs> one election that has been flipped by phony voters. Well, all your rich guys can come up with ten thousand dollars for these. No, I said I bet you Mitt Romney's money. I'm going to stick. (laughs) I'm going to stick with uh, with the facts here, and the facts are that there are uh, increased. uh, No, the facts uh, are that you guys are throwing five million people off the ballot this year, and most of them are people who live in in cities and don't have cars and never have, which is predominantly people of color, people who are elderly, which is. predominantly people who vote for Medicare and Social Security, and, and after the Republicans all voted to destroy Medicare, that constituency is seriously pissed off. And young people who are going to college, and you know they're, they're, who also tend to vote Democratic, and their college ID is, is not going to be accepted by the states. That's your interpretation. I would say let's let this 2012 election bear out, and you're going to see at least two or three of those demographics uh, shift their voting pattern. And it has nothing to do with registration rules. It has everything to do with policy appeal. I, I just don't understand why anybody would want to say, no, you can't vote. But I respect your right to say it. Horace Cooper, heartland.org. You can check it out. Thanks Thank for you. having me on.